this is Dr. Michael Greger coming to you live from my treadmill, uh, temporarily stationed in Los Angeles, but moving to Seattle next week to write my next book over the next year, Pacific Northwest, here I come. Excited to announce that my latest book, ta-da, um, uh, my new cookbook, the How Not to Diet Cookbook, which just came out this month has sold in a single week more than 100,000 copies. Um, that is so crazy. I'm excited that people found it useful for both themselves and everyone on their gift list. And of course, all proceeds I receive from all my books are all donated directly to charity. All right. Today, right now, live, I'm going to present my take on the new study about bone fracture risk and those eating plant-based diets. Now, normally when I do webinars, I have all these, you know, polished videos that I've done and I just kind of present a sneak peek, but I was getting so many questions about this new study. They don't want to wait until the videos were done. I mean, they'll eventually be done um, and posted on uh, nutritionfacts.org, but instead I'm going to attempt a grand experiment, right? Something never before attempted. Uh, you know how my videos are basically just uh, me showing you all the studies, showing you the data. Well, hey, I have all the studies. Why don't I just show you them in real time? Now, it's going to be clumsy, slow, awkward, right, to show you each of the quotes and charts and graphs. But I wanted to get this out ASAP. And so hopefully you'll forgive that. I mean, look, and it's important to me to show you where I'm getting this stuff from. Now, I know a lot of you just want me to kind of skip to the chase, give you my opinion. But that's not how it works around here, right? If you want to just follow some words of some self-appointed nutrition guru, you have come to the wrong place, right? I'm not interested in opinions, dogma, beliefs, mine, or anyone else's. I'm interested in the science. What does the best available balance of evidence show right now? And so I want to show my work show you how I arrived at my conclusions, give you hyperlinks to all the original studies so you can read them all yourself. With so much nutritional noise and nonsense permeating nutrition these days, we need to just stick to the facts. I know, radical. These days, I did say the F word, yes. Um, what a concept. Let's dive in. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. Okay. Are you ready for this grand experiment? Let's do this. Okay. So, here, let me do this here. Okay. So, hopefully, you can uh, see this right here. Um, okay. So, let's start. Um, oh, here, let's get a nice red. There we go. Osteoporosis is. Uh, is uh, um, where are we? Yes, osteoporosis is estimated to affect 200 million people worldwide, um, literally meaning porous bone. Osteoporosis is a disease characterized by reduced bone formation, excessive bone loss, or a combination of both, leading to bone fragility and an increased risk of fractures. And bone mineral density is the most robust and consistent predictor of osteoporotic factor. We know that increased consumption of plant foods is associated with increased bone mineral density. There is an extensive range of uh, micronutrients and phytochemicals packaged within plants that can have powerful promoters of bone health. So healthcare practitioners, um, healthcare professionals should be encouraged to advise the increased consumption of plant-based foods, particularly in midlife, irrespective of clients' underlying dietary pattern, meaning no matter how much meat or junk uh, you eat, adding more healthy plant foods may help prevent the development of osteoporosis. On the other hand, um, uh, do, do, do. Um, oh, uh, let's actually go back up here. No, where am I looking here? Oh, here we go. 
On the other, um, uh, on the other hand, a more animal, um, uh, uh, a, uh, a more animal sourced nutrient pattern has been associated with higher risk of fracture, a higher risk of fractures, suggesting doo -doo -doo, that um, uh, suggesting that a more animal based diet is related to bone fragility. Um, uh, so you'd expect less osteoporosis in those eating plant-based diets, but you don't know until you <gasps> put it to the test. Indeed, the incidence of osteoporosis in vegetarians and omnivores, the first study published nearly 50 years ago and dun, 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 the incidence of uh, 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 the density um, uh, of the uh, of the bones that were measured was significantly greater in the vegetarians than the omnivores. In fact, the average um, bone densities of the vegetarians in their 70s was greater than the densities of the meat eaters in their 50s. So, bottom line. Uh, the bottom line is that these results suggest that there is less likelihood of vegetarians developing osteoporosis in old age. Turns out, though, that the researchers screwed the heck up. DEXA scanning, which is what we use now, didn't come online until the 1980s. So the researchers were just using regular x-rays and they confused the reading such that darker bones on x-ray got a higher score, but that actually means less bone. So their conclusions should have been the opposite. Um, their conclusions should have been the opposite of what they claimed. Um, so vegetarians had worse bone mineral density. All right, let's fast forward about 40 years here, um, by which time um, there are um, nine studies have been done on thousands of individuals. And all in all, the results suggest that vegetarian diets, particularly vegan diets, are associated with lower bone mineral density. But the magnitude of the association is clinically insignificant, meaning the difference was so small as to not really matter out in the real world. Uh, reinforcing the fact um, that vegetarian diets have no clinically detrimental effects on bone health. And it's important to note, it's important to note that the findings of lower bone mineral density didn't fully control for key confounding factors such as differences in body weight. We know that people um, who are obese have stronger bones. Why? Because they're, you know, weightlifting 50 pounds a day, right? Maybe a hundred pounds, right? If you walked around with a hundred pound backpack every day, your bones would grow stronger too. And that's how you build strong bones, weight bearing exercise. So people who weigh more can have denser bones. And vegetarians and especially vegans have such low rates of obesity that no wonder on average, they would have a lower bone mineral density they didn't take weight into account. But if the difference they found isn't even clinically significant, who cares? As of 2009, the answer to the question, is vegetarianism a severe, a serious risk factor for osteoporotic factor? The answer is no. Um, vegetarianism is not a serious factor. By 2000. 18, the latest meta-analysis on veganism, vegetarianism, and bone riddle density. And by that time, whew, we were already up to 20 um, studies involving tens of thousands of participants and dun, 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 again, lower bone mineral density was found in studies of vegetarians and vegans compared to meat eaters. The researchers conclude that vegetarians and vegan diets need to be appropriately planned to preserve their bones. But wait, 
did they account for the obesity thing? And the answer is no, they did not. Um, uh, they just used what are called crude risk ratios, meaning no adjustments for confounding factors like weight. So they uh, didn't control for things like age, smoking, obesity, exercise. So the results were really, can I make another? Uh, uninterpretable. Okay. Um, uh, but no one had gone through the trouble of going back through all those studies and making the proper adjustments until now. The title gives it away. Differences in bone mineral density between vegetarians and non-vegetarians become marginal when accounting for differences in body size. Yes, as you can see here in green, um, uh, bone mineral density values were significantly lower among vegetarians than among non-vegetarians, just like in the case of nearly every um, uh, every single study on bone mineral density and excess weight. Um, uh, but here in red, hopefully you can see that. Um, but forget clinical significance. These differences even lost statistical significance when it, upon adjustment for body size variables, suggesting that lower bone mineral density among vegetarians is in larger parts explained by their low BMI and waist circumference. Thus, Thus, it's not so much the composition of the diets of vegetarians and vegans as much as it is the fact that they become so much slimmer when they eat healthier. Now, a small but statistically significant um, uh, difference remained for lower uh, total lower spine density, a difference of 0 0.03. Remember that number, 0 0.03. Um, now, this was dismissed as having, you can see here, um, having, quote unquote, little clinical significance. But is that little clinical relevance? But is that true? Well, if you look at the reproducibility of bone mineral density measurements in daily practice, you can see that if you do repeat tests back to back, um, uh, then there's a scatter in measurement. And so significant difference really has to be more than this inherent variation. Like this is not the same, like the same kind of measurements, you can kind of, kind of get this scatter. So you want to, you would, so if you're actually trying to note a change, you would have to be more than just the inherent scatter. Um, and so um, that's why indeed, if you look here in purple, um, uh, that uh, ex um, expresses the smallest detected difference. You really need to be a, be a bone mineral density disparity of at least 0 0.05 at the spine before it can be considered a significant change. So indeed, there does appear to be little clinical relevance, right? Because it was 0 0.03, which would just be kind of within the normal scatter. However, where are we? However, even if vegetarians and vegans basically have the same bone mineral, mineral density at the same weight, I mean, everyone who's skinny is at risk. Low BMI is a risk factor for fractures. So all people in a low body weight category consuming any type of diet should be monitored for osteoporosis, um, which, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, has become an increasingly major public health problem worldwide. The morbidity and even mortality of osteoporotic complications such as hip fractures are severe. Um, uh, osteoporosis is diagnosed, where are we here? Ooh, doo, doo, doo. Um, where am I? Osteoporosis 10G. Gee, looking for green. There we go. Osteoporosis um, is uh, is diagnosed by testing low in bone mineral density. It inflicts about 120 men over uh, 65 and one in four women. So do we need to be concerned 
about the bone mineral density of vegetarians and vegans. There are studies showing that a vegetarian style diet during adolescence can have a positive um, impact um, on, uh, on bone in young adulthood. But what we really want to know is about osteoporosis at older ages. Um, as I mentioned, a meta-analysis um, uh, concluded uh, that um, vegetarian diets, particularly vegan diets, were associated with lower bone mineral density, but only by a clinically insignificant amount. Given the association, uh, given the um, relationship between fracture risk and bone mineral density, the relative risk of fractures in, where is relative risk? Do, 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 do. Let me see if it goes on. Yeah, the relative risk of fractures in vegans um, uh, would only be about 10% higher than in meat eaters. But that doesn't sound very insignificant to me. Um, uh, now, I talked about how differences in bone mineral density are uh, largely a function of vegetarians and vegans having such low rates of obesity. Um, obese uh, individuals are, um, uh, yes, as I said before, obese individuals are protected from osteoporosis because they have so much weight-bearing exercise, just, you know, walking from one room to another, basically. But we only care about bone mineral density because we care about bone fractures. What's the comparable fracture risk in vegetarians versus non-vegetarians? Now we're talking. All right. And this is what um, uh, this study found compared with meat eaters, um, same risk. Um, so we're going to look at the green here. Um, so compared to meat eaters, um, same risk for vegetarians, um, and uh, but a higher risk for vegans. Uh, now it was really mostly, um, if you see here, these are the type of fractures. Really mostly just uh, wrist. Um, and ankle, um, uh, wrist, excuse me, wrist and arm fractures. Oh, here we go. Sorry, wrist and arm, wrist and arm fractures, um, uh, which uh, uh, there were not any um, hip fractures, as you can see here. Um, uh, and, you know, wrist fractures are uh, the most uh, common uh, fractures. Um, and interestingly, um, occurs typically in women who are in good health and active. It's the kind of fracture you get if you like trip when you run, playing tennis, fall on an outstretched hand. But the, uh, da, 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 da. but the, th da, 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 where are we here? 13T3, let me see if that's back up here. Yes, but the 30% higher risk um, in, uh, uh, the 30 percent higher risk in vegans um, uh, was after controlling for non-dietary factors, including, as you can see here in orange, including um, activity such as exercise or an active workplace. The increased risk only disappeared when they do, 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 do. <laughs> The increased risk only disappeared when they controlled for calcium. Um, uh, yes. So vegans were only at higher risk when they got under 525 milligrams of calcium a day, which is equal to the estimated average requirement. Among those getting... Among... Those getting at least 525 among subjects, here we go, among subjects getting at least uh, 525, there was no, uh, doo -doo -doo, there was no greater risk um, among the, um, among the, there was no greater risk among vegans. So the higher fracture risk 
Um, the higher fracture ratio in vegans appears to be a consequence of inadequate calcium intake, which is essential for bone health, regardless of what kind of diet you eat. Now, you don't have to drink milk. Um, uh, to uh, to uh, a greater intake of milk and dairy products is not associated with lower risk of osteoporosis or hip fractures. In fact, as you can see up here in green, every additional cup of uh, cow's milk a day was associated with 9% greater risk of hip fractures in prospective studies. But you have to get calcium from somewhere. Plant-based sources of calcium include almonds, sesame seeds, tofu, a calcium fortified plant milks, and of course the best sources, dark green leafy vegetables such as kale, or basically any dark green leafies except for spinach, beet greens, and chard, uh, which are a little stingy with their calcium. Great foods, stingy with their calcium. Now in most um, uh, uh, vegans in the study were actually getting more than that, uh, as you can see right here, were getting more than the 525. There's lots of uh, healthy foods packed with calcium here. Um, um, but they only work if you actually eat them. Okay, but wait a second. What about the mountain of data showing that calcium intake is not associated um, with, uh, with the risk of fracture? And there's no evidence that increasing calcium intake prevents fracture. And so, you know, calcium intake should not be recommended for fracture prevention. Ah, but that is based on, uh, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is based on giving extra calcium to people who are already getting enough calcium. So it may just be kind of a plateau effect. If you give people, um, uh, so if you take women who are getting only uh, 511 milligrams of calcium a day and randomize them to take calcium supplements. And you can see, dun, da, da, dun, a, uh, you can see a drop in hip fracture rates by 40% within 18 months. Now, they were also giving them vitamin D3. Um, uh, and uh, the women really did start out quite deficient um, in vitamin D, do, do, do. Um, as you can see here, um, uh, um, uh, with levels down around 15. So it's hard to tease out the effects of the calcium versus the D. But vegans who aren't supplementing with calcium, as you can see in this chart right here, um, at higher latitudes can really dip down. Here's the vegan right here, can really dip down um, uh, that low during the winter months. Note this is in nanomoles per liter. So that would, uh, 40 would be equivalent to about 15 nanograms per milliliter, which is what we saw in the previous study. Now there was this study in Shanghai um, that found comparable bone health despite lower D levels down around, um, uh, here we go, here's the 15, down around 15. There it is, in fact, exactly 15. They were also low in calcium um, intake as well, and still had, as you can see here in pink, similar bone mineral density. But given that fracture study, I'd encourage people to make sure they're getting enough calcium and vitamin D. But that fracture study was published in 2007. A 2020 update um, uh, found a 50% um, um, higher risk of fractures, um, even in vegans getting more than 700 milli milligrams of calcium a day. So wait a second, what explains that? We'll explore that final question next, as in right now. See, that's the nice thing about doing this live. We don't have to wait for the a couple of days of the next video to come up. Oh, all right. Whew. Okay, as I noted before, um, vegetarians, here in yellow, vegetarians had slightly lower bone mineral density in their spines, although the difference was basically within the margin of error for the test, 
if, as you can see in red here, the bone quality really is compromised, it can lead to collapse. Vertebra increasing spinal fracture risk, but there's no evidence for this. The incidence of vertebral fractures um, was, uh, was ascertained in older women um, who had been vegan most of their lives. Well, check this out, 34, where is it? A duration of uh, vegan, 34 years vegan on average. And despite their calcium intake being terrible, whoo, down about 300, half that of the non-vegans, about half that of the non-vegans, um, and a quarter of them were um, vitamin D deficient, um, uh, the, despite all that, the incidence of, do, 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 the incidence of, um, uh, vertebral fractures is not significantly different. Although the vegans did have, um, a higher prevalence of vitamin D deficiency, lower dietary calcium intakes, the two factors were not associated with bone loss. In fact, uh, do, 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 in fact... The rate here in yellow, um, in fact, the, um, da, 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 the annual um, loss in bone mineral density in the hips of the vegans um, was, uh, uh, was less than half that of the meat eaters, uh, though the difference did not reach statistical significance, as you can see right here. Um, vegetarian women have not been found. Oh, where's my vegetarian women? Um, vegetarian women have not been found to be at higher, um, at risk of any kind of fractures, including risk factors in this case, although among vegetarians, um, those who consume the least vegetable protein intake, vegetable protein intake, um, um, were at higher risk for fracture. So those who ate beans every day or nuts or like veggie, here we go. This is what they're talking about when they talk about vegetable protein. Those who ate beans every day or nuts or like veggie burgers had only a third of the risk fractures compared to vegetarians who only ate beans or other higher protein foods less than three times a week. So those, uh, do, 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 let's go. So those who, um, uh, so those consume a vegetarian or vegan diet may be at increased risk of fractures unless care is taken to ensure that adequate quantity and variety of foods, high in protein, such as whole grains, nuts and beans, split peas, chickpeas, or lentils are in the diet. That's one of the reasons. In my, oh, I should hold it up. Hold on. That's why in my Daily Dozen app, can you, oh, you, can, you can't see this. Hold on. Boop, boop, boop. That's why in my Daily Dozen app, um, uh, free, of course. Um, I recommend whole grains or legumes every single day. Okay. Now, hip fractures are even, hip fractures are even more serious. Um, uh, those eating legumes, like uh, beans, um, uh, every day reduce the risk of hip fracture by more than 60%. Woo! Six more, more than 60%. Um, uh, where are we? Um, compared with 40% lower risk um, uh, of, uh, for um, animal protein sources and about 50% uh, lower risk um, uh, with plant-based meats coming in between at 50% lower risk of hip fraction. What's the bottom line on plant-based diets and bone health according to this 2020 review? Well, theoretically here in yellow, um, theoretically, a long-term plant-based diet may reduce the risk of osteoporosis, but that is yet to be demonstrated. And then in red here, um, what we do know is that plant-based diets, when ensuring adequate calcium and vitamin D levels, don't appear to have any detrimental effects on bone health. But this was published in August of 2020. In November of 2020, the 12-year follow-up of the study I talked about before, um, uh, um, on comparative fracture risk in vegetarians versus non-vegetarians were published, was published finding that non-vegetarians, um, non-vegetarians, non-vegetarians, um, and, uh, particularly, 
vegans had higher risk of total bone fractures, including at sites associated um, with osteoporosis, such as hip fractures. Um, it comes out to be about 20 more cases in vegans for every 1,000 people over a period of 10 years. So if indeed this is cause and effect, then eating, um, uh, then um, there would be an annual one in five, so eating vegan, there would be an annual one in 500 chance of having a bone fracture that you otherwise might not have had. Was it because they weren't eating enough beans? Apparently not, since even those getting, since even those getting, um, uh, so even those getting um, a sufficient uh, um, protein levels were apparently still at higher risk. Uh, maybe it was because um, they weren't getting enough calcium. So here's the calcium uh, amount of calcium that the vegans were getting. Um, uh, apparently not because a vegan's getting more calcium still. More calcium. Doo -doo -doo still had higher, um, still were apparently at higher risk. So, well, how do we explain this? Well, what about bone and vitamin B12? If you remember, Epic Oxford, um, where the bone data came from, is the same group of British vegans who had rampant B12 deficiency. Check this out. 52% um, um, more than half of vegans were B12 deficient because they weren't adequately supplementing with B12 or B12 fortified foods. And this can lead to uh, high homocysteine levels, which I talked about in my stroke webinar, um, which not only increases risk of stroke risk, but may increase the risk of, um, excuse me, may increase the, the activity of, um, of bone eating cells called osteoclasts. Um, uh, there, this was, um, there's, uh, um, this was, uh, in a Petri dish, but indeed you do see lower bone mineral density, um, uh, in, uh, those born with birth defect, at least a high homocysteine levels in the blood. Therefore having high homocysteine levels should uh, be, um, uh, regarded as a factor that can reduce both bone mass and quality, but you don't know until you put it to the test. And bone and homocysteine lowering treatment here in green. Where's my green? And here in green, and, and homocysteine lowering treatments failed to reduce the risk of bone fracture. So in the end, the effect of vitamin B deficiency, B12 deficiency on bone health is not well established yet. Yeah, remains to be established. Okay. So how do we explain the higher fracture risk among vegans? Now the investigators concluded here in yellow um, that their findings suggest that bone health in vegans requires fur further research, but there were some clues. The elevated fracture risk, um, uh, both for total fractures and for hip fractures specifically, um, uh, this is in, oh, this is uh, for hip fractures by dye group. Um, for hip fractures specifically um, uh, was only significant for those under uh, a BMI of 22 and a half. Oh, for, in other words, for really skinny people. Only significant for skinny people. Where is my... Here we go. It was only significant for those with the BMI under 20, 20, uh, 22.5, which is like being under 130 pounds for a woman of average height. Um, and so, um, so part of the problem is that vegans tend to be so slender on average. Um, so you can see that um, the vegans uh, who were heavier than that um, were not at increased risk. Um, and just to remind people why overweight and obese individuals are protected from factors, well, think about it, right? There is, um, uh, you know, they have cushioning during a fall. Uh, there's like more of a cushion on their hips. Also, there's an enzyme in fatty tissue that turns out estrogen, um, which is why um, women increase their breast cancer risk. Um, uh, a percentage point for every pound they gain in adulthood but estrogen can also have a bone preserving effect. So you can get the best of both worlds 
consuming soy foods. Uh, preventing bone loss while at the same time associated with lessening breast cancer risk for both estrogen receptor positive um, breast cancer and estrogen receptor negative tumors. Finally, uh, overweight um, and, uh, and obese individuals may have stronger bones uh, just from the increased weight bearing. Um, as I mentioned before, carrying 100 extra pounds, you're weight bearing just walking around. Um, so the difference, the risk differences they saw. Uh, uh, uh. So let me see. Da, da, da. Why? Oh yeah, here we go. So the risk differences they saw between vegans and meat eaters were likely at least partially due to the differences in BMI. My money, however, is on vitamin D. Next time you see a globe, spin that globe and draw a line. You can draw a latitude line from Great Britain um, over to Canada, right? The UK is up at Canadian latitudes. The sun's rays are at such an angle um, during the winter months up there. That, as I showed you before, um, the vitamin D levels in British vegans falls during the winter months um, uh, uh, down to suboptimal levels. Ideally, um, we should be up around 75, um, and this is in terms of nanomoles per liter, um, or 30 nanograms per, mil uh, nanograms per milliliter, depending on what units you're using. Now, the vegans totally nailed that during the summer, right? Um, just where they want to be. But, um, uh, you know, it is the sunshine vitamin after all. But in the winter, um, uh, they were not getting enough vitamin D, um, which is added to dairy or found naturally in oily fish if vegans are, aren't supplementing. At, la at those latitudes during the winter, the vitamin D levels may simply drop too low. Now, randomized controlled trials um, show that uh, vitamin D alone doesn't seem to reduce fracture rates but um, boosting people's D and calcium at the same time does. So maybe it was a combination of the relatively low D and calcium intakes among the vegans that led to their higher fracture rates. We don't know for sure until it's actually put to the test. And when it is, you can be sure. I'll do a video about it or even one of these live webinar thingies so you don't have to wait for the video. Whew. All right, let me bring that up to here and let me just say thank you. That's all I got. That's everything I think there is to know about this topic published so far. I hope you found it useful. Whew. Um, there's uh, certainly time for questions. Um, uh, but uh, you'll note uh, that usually when I do these webinars, I ask for some kind of suggested donations to nutritionfacts.org. You know, nothing's ever behind a paywall, but we just ask people to help support their work if we can. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit charity. If you're here in the U.S., donations are tax deductible. We do have this end of year donation drive happening right now. In fact, the first $100,000 is going to be matched by a very generous anonymous donor. Um, if you want more of these impromptu science behind the headlines, informal webinars, please let me um, you know by signaling your support. Um, by helping us out. Um, so I encourage you to please consider uh, supporting us. I'm always trying to juggle how to spend my time, books, cookbooks, videos, webinars, podcasts, interviews. If you found this valuable, please consider helping us out. Um, but I know there's been a tough year. And if you can't, no problem. That's why I didn't even ask for a suggested donation for this. Um, uh, for this. And I just wanted to go online free right away. Uh, but if you can help, that'd be awesome. We reach so many millions of people that if even one in a thousand people kicks in a few bucks, uh, we will be good to go for 2021. Let us take your questions for our remaining time. Whew. Okay. Let's see what we got. Um, let's have the questions uh, flow in. Okay, I'm just, they're coming in so quickly, all I do is click randomly. So if there's like swear words or something, there's nothing I can do about it, I'll just click off, find something else. So it's kind of like roulette. Let's just see what comes up. Why aren't these popping up? Oh my God, they're coming in so fast. There we go. Uh, Katie, but extra weight and fats and blood in food is not good for heart health. Absolutely, right. So I'm not saying we should become overweight and obese to protect our bones because then we'll just die. We can cut our, our lives short 
Um, um, and so uh, we really want the best of both worlds. Number one killer is not fracture. The number one killer is heart disease. And, um, uh, and, uh, and number two is cancer, both of which are increased by having excess body fat. Next. Oh, damn it. Sorry. Great event. Thank you, Lucas. Um, uh, what is that? Somebody, I can't even tell. Oh, it's a chicken. Uh, I think it's a chicken emoji. Uday. Um, Next Generation Nutrition says, thank you. You are so welcome. Um, Jared says, thank you. You're welcome. No need to thank me. Um, I appreciate it. I just want to get some questions in. You are very sweet, Katie. Um, all right. Oh, uh, this is Gina uh, answering Karen. And Minna. Minna, thanks from Finland. That's very cool. More thanks. Hopefully there'll be a few questions in here somewhere. Um, uh, uh, you're welcome. Uh, oh, does water help bone health? I didn't find anything about hydration and bone health, although it's not something I specifically look for, but certainly didn't stumble across it. Deb says, hyperparathyroid connection to bone fractures. I just got my latest book. Yes, the parathyroid gland does uh, um, uh, uh, modulate calcium levels and can indeed um, play a role in osteoporotic bone fractures. Dan, the Lambie says, did they probably control for, yes, different exercise. Um, people doing high impact sports. Um, uh, oh, I see. So not just exercise in general, um, but the type of exercise. So maybe the vegans were like, really pounding it out and the omnivores were just like, you know, uh, row, row, row your boating. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I think uh, my impression, um, well, I, I, I don't remember exactly. I'd be surprised if they didn't have some kind of a measure of intensity. Um, great question though. Okay. Igor, what about zinc? Um, zinc's important for all sorts of things, including immune function, but uh, is not a primary. Um, but uh, I, I don't think well, zinc is multi-purpose, um, uh, critical to get enough zinc. But uh, that's not a, a, a typical um, bone-building mineral you think of first. Okay, love the millet. Oh, wonderful. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce upma. Is it upma? Uh, Mary loves the millet upma. In the new cookbook, I'm so glad you loved it. Um, I, you know, millet, I got some millet and some sorghum videos coming up because there's all sorts of amazing things uh, with these little grains that I have not been cooking with enough. Okay, let me click again. Lorraine says, what do I think about the drug Reclass? That must be a brand name. I don't even know what the generic is. If you know the name of the drug, I would be happy to uh, talk about it. Oh, and if it's one of the osteoporotic um, uh, bone, uh, uh, bone drugs, um, I'm, uh, that's on my list of, of videos to do about, um, uh, there's many different classes and they'll have different kind of pros and cons. Okay. Uh, Karen is just, uh, replying to Emil. Leslie says that her PCB wants, um, her to take a calcium vitamin D, uh, the PCP, um, which does not stand for angel dust, but, uh, but for primary care, phys uh, physician. Um, I do not want to take this trying to increase greens and beans, right? You can get all the calcium and vitamin D. Now you're not going to get any vitamin D from beans and greens. You're going to get that from where? Sunshine. But if you're at such a latitude, you're not going to get enough sun, um, uh, particularly this time of the year. Um, uh, then you need to get uh, supplemental D, but there's no reason you need to take supplemental calcium. In fact, there are downsides of supplemental calcium. If you look um, at my video, are calcium supplements safe? You'll see the answer is no, but the calcium containing foods, um, like uh, dark green leafy vegetables are um, delicious, nutritious, the healthiest foods on the planet, best source of calcium. Whew, I'm going to take a drink. So much easier to do webinars where I just click a button and play a video. Whew, okay. Gabrielle says, Dylan, take 10 grams of omega-6, low or dangerous. Well, no reason you need to worry. I mean, the only thing you need to worry about is Getting rid of omega-6 rich oils, which is cottonseed oil, um, uh, a corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil. Um, and look, we sh there's no reason to need any kind of oil, but those partic are particularly junky in terms of excess omega-6 um, uh, content. Next up, Severin. What product to use before colonoscopy? To empty without destroying the microbiome. Your microbiome will bounce right back. 
Um, I would encourage you to look at my videos on colonoscopy. If you're just getting a routine colon cancer screening, there are better options than colonoscopy. Um, but I'm so glad you brought it up because they just changed the year at which you should start getting colon cancer screening down to 45. So I just got my colon screened for cancer and I'm negative. You say, wait a second. Why would I get my colon screen for cancer, even if it is recommended by the uh, USP, USP, USPSTF, which is a presentative of services task force, because it's even more important for plant-based eaters to get colon cancer screening. Why? Because we're going to live so much longer. So the reason uh, that they end colon cancer screening and breast cancer screening at a certain age is because they're like, even if we find it, um, it's not going to, you know, you're, you're going to die anyway of heart disease so quickly that it doesn't really help to treat it. But if you're planning on being around for a long time, then we really need to, um, you know, cut out these early cancers, which could have significant detriment to our lifespan. Okay, next up. Gabrielle is back. Oh, we heard that. Um, somebody's 80. I don't know where that came from. Karen, there's evidence. Of, oh, higher sodium intake. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, so absolutely. There's lots of things you can do. So I didn't talk about how caffeine can lead to bone loss and how excess sodium intake can lead to bone loss. The reason I didn't talk about those kind of factors is because there's no reason to suspect that vegans have higher caffeine intake or higher sodium intake than their omnivores. So that couldn't explain the difference. Um, but note that I didn't go into all the other wonderful factors. Um, that help bone health and decrease bone health, just the ones that are different between plant eaters and non-plant eaters to try to get at this discrepancy. Okay, next up, Joshua says, yeah, sunshine's great. Um, uh, Maxine says, how many minutes of sunlight per day? Depends on a number of factors. Um, primarily your skin tone. If you are white enough, and light enough, meaning uh, skinny enough, and young enough, then 10 to 15 minutes, forearms and face. So you can be like completely clothed, but just, you know, like forearms and face, 10, 15 minutes, all the vitamin D you need. But if you're uh, darker skinned, may take uh, up to 45 minutes to get the same amount. Um, and at certain high latitudes during the winter months, like January, February, it doesn't matter how long you sunbathe naked on the Boston Commons, you're not going to make any vitamin D during the winter because the sun's rays are at such an angle. So we need at least during the winter months to supplement with 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day, which is what I do. Even though now I'm, I've am i been living in some sunny climates, I don't get out much because I'm doing all the research for you. All right, next up. Oh, Shelly says, what about vitamin K2? So glad you brought that up. Um, and so uh, um, there, uh, okay, so... Vitamin K, there are multiple types of vitamin K classes, K1, K2. Um, K1 is found in the healthiest um, food on the planet, which is dark green leafy vegetables. Um, but K2 um, is found mostly in animal products. And so wait a second, um, could that be a reason why the vegans have higher risk because they're not getting enough K2? Okay, first of all, um, there's no known difference between K1 and K2 in terms of function. So if you're getting enough K1, you don't need to get any K2. They, they, we have not, there are, there are no bodily functions for which K1, K2 has been differentiated. So eat your greens, you're all set. Okay, but let's say, for argument's sake, that we next week discovered a difference between K1 and K2, such that K2 had some benefits that K1 didn't have. Doesn't matter, you know why? Because your good gut flora convert K1 in greens into K2, then it gets absorbed into your system. So you don't have to eat animal products. Um, in fact, that's how they end up in animal products. Um, uh, and you say, okay, wait a second. You're assuming I have good gut bugs. What if I just took antibiotics, wiped out my flora? Um, maybe, you know, how do I know I have good bugs or not? Guess what? Doesn't matter. You know why? Because your own body, the cells in your body convert K1 into K2. That's why cows have K K2 in their body because they have cells that convert uh, K1 to K2. So you make K2, even with no gut bacteria. Isn't that amazing? So you want K2, guess what? Boom, your body makes it. Only if you eat greens though. So eat some greens. I got some videos about that coming up. What are my thoughts on the vaccines? 
Um, uh, I, uh, I am fully in favor of uh, getting uh, the uh, COVID-19 vaccines uh, to protect you and those around you. Um, and so I'm very much looking forward to my dose, my two doses. Um, all right, Mayor, 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 Marian, Marianess, um, does pregnant women, do pregnant women uh, need to eat extra calcium? They need to eat sufficient calcium. Um, and in fact, I have a video talking about how giving um, pregnant women extra calcium actually had detrimental effects. I believe that's in my, are calcium supplements safe? Um, or either that or, or calcium supplements effective. One of those two videos. Okay. David says, well, what's the better options than colonoscopy? I thought it was the best option. Um, now, if, the, if, your, if your doctor is concerned about a lesion that they actually want to biopsy, well, then you got to do a colonoscopy. But if they're just doing routine colon cancer screening, sigmoidoscopy is better, as you can see by my videos. And now there's another option, this uh, DNA-based, where you just send in a stool sample. Um, I don't know if I want to tell you my funny story. Ready for my funny story? So they actually rejected my stool sample. So I went for the, uh, you know, because I didn't want to go in the doctor's office, COVID and all. Um, and so, uh, so you can actually send in a stool sample. They do this DNA test looking for cancer markers. And they actually rejected my sample. How could they reject Dr. Greger's poop? Too big. I'm serious. It was the, they said the sample was too large. They rejected it. Had to go through that. Had to do a number two, number two, send it back in. Anyway, turns out, but I'm glad I did. All negative, huh? All right, so don't overdo it. That's funny. All right, Shannon. Should I supplement when healing from a, oh, what should I supplement when healing from a fracture? Um, the same things you do to, for, for bone health to keep your bones nice and strong. Um, and so, you know, eat your, you know, eat your greens, make sure you're getting enough vitamin D, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, yeah, eat healthy is the answer. How do I heal from X? Fill in the blank. It's eat healthy. Okay. We talked about vaccines. All right, we talked about pregnant women and vegan linked loves his widow Michael by own buddies. Uh, Gabrielle, thanks, Kimberly. Um, don't worry, be happy. Thought K2 has cardiovascular benefits, no more than K1, but it doesn't matter because you make K2. You make K2. Does K2 have no added benefits on top of, um, of, uh, of, Menaquinone 4, correct. There's no uh, additional benefits that we know of. Okay, and Dodgers K2 converted from K1 isn't in adequate levels to prevent factors. Show me some data. I'd be happy to look at it. Certainly not from what I thought, saw. Joshua says, young men with osteoporosis, plant-based with calcium stones. Do I suggest supplementing with calcium? Uh, PGH is normal as in serum, serum calcium. Um, so uh, presumably the, you're talking about calcium oxalate stones. So uh, you want to um, be concerned about your oxalate intake. So when you're eating your dark green leafy vegetables, you're not doing spinach, beet greens, chard, the high oxalate greens, you're eating low oxalate greens. Um, but um, you should be able to get sufficient calcium intake from low oxalate sources. Mm, Neldereth sounds very uh, Lord of the Rings. Have you done reviews on flu efficacy? Yes. Uh, I assume you're talking about flu vaccine efficacy studies. Yes. In fact, they're already online. If you look in my video on COVID uh, vaccines, I talk about the efficacy of flu vaccines. All right. Deborah. Uh, it looks like Deborah is re uh, responding to somebody. Someone else is responding to somebody. Um, Charlene says B12 intake. Should go up at 65. Yes, that's true. What about approaching 65? Nope, 65 is cut off. So you can follow the uh, regular recommendations at age 64, and on your birthday, switch it up. Someone's correcting a spelling error. Someone's responding to somebody else. Everybody poops, my dude. I can't wait to hear what the question for that was. Somebody, oh, someone thinks something is hilarious. I wonder if it's my... <laughs> my story. Um, uh, all right. So I think I think we are part of the conversation where 
<laughs> people are responding. All right, I'm going to kind of spin forward here, see if I can get past all the laughing at me. How can we improve our gut flora? We can eat prebiotic-rich foods. And in fact, um, a central tenet of my latest cookbook, the How Not to Diet Cookbook, um, um, is brole, right? My brole mixture, prebiotic mixture, talking about specific whole grains and legumes which have the most um, uh, fl good flora fostering um, prebiotics. Check it out. It's also in my book, How Not to Diet. Um, and there's also gluten-free varieties if that's something that's important to you. All right. Don't know what that's about. The lovely Carol uh, says peanut oil versus olive oil. And the answer is neither oil. Eat some peanuts. Joshua says, oh, we talked about Joshua. Um, and we talked to the lovely Carol. Oh, someone just disappeared. Oh, sorry. Someone, I think I'm clicking too quickly. Um, did I know sea moth is good? Sea moss is good for strong bones. Send me the sea moss study. I'll do a video about it. Not something I ran across. Someone's responding to somebody. Alan says, if one exceeds the daily dozen on greens, does it help the bones? Um, can you eat too many greens? You cannot eat too many grains. Um, low oxalate greens, that is. Gabriel says, what I recommend soy. Oh, no. Why do I not recommend lecithin supplements? Because lecithin um, is a concentrated source of choline. It's found in egg yolks um, and is converted um, by bad bacteria in your gut to trimethylamine, oxidized by your liver, into TMAO, a toxic chemical associated with all sorts of bad outcomes. No lecithin supplements, please. Vegan linked his back, said on Twitter, I mentioned greens being the most nutrient dense. Very true. Um, um, what do I say in response to people who would question that? Oh, my God. Go to the USDA nutrient database and look at the nutrients per calorie in greens versus anything else in the universe. Okay. Uh, 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 Vital says, our fertility experiments seem to say you need loads of protein and fat. Oh, God. Um, uh, so uh, look, if you just type in fertility, so the truth is actually the opposite, particularly when it comes to saturated fat. If you look at nutritionfacts.org, type in the word fertility, all will be revealed. Okay, what do I recommend for vegan, vegan bodybuilding? Um, I recommend um, eating healthy and... You know, I recommend eating healthy like everybody else. Um, and I do not recommend protein supplements. Um, Matthew says, the strength of evidence for miso. What is the strength of evidence for miso not increasing blood pressure? Um, the evidence, um, uh, I believe it's, uh, oh, I'd have to go back and look at this. So look at my miso video. Um, uh, there's certainly observational data of people I'm eating as much as three bowls of miso soup a day, not having higher rates of high blood pressure um, than those not. Um, but whether there's interventional data, you'd have to look at the study. It's a good question. Thank you, Matthew. All right. Uh, Carolina has some lots of flatulence with dark green leafies. Is that a sign of a problem? Uh, it depends on the person you're living with. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, we should eat our dark green leafies, period, and your gut flora should uh, should eventually get the memo, and uh, excess flesh should go away. Uh-oh. Uh, just like that answer did. Okay, Julian says, the calcium and D affect teeth health. Huh, not something I've looked at. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, I do have a bunch of videos on dental health. Um, but not on calcium D specifically. All right. What else we got? I don't know why it's not clicking on any. There we go. Okay. Jesse says, um, having superventricular tachycardia. Um, what can we do about diet? Not something I've looked into. Sorry about that. Next up, Jim says, what are the effects of COVID vaccines and or vitamin D on COVID systems? I have a video about vitamin D and COVID. Um, we don't, I don't have any videos on COVID vaccine. I mean, I do have a video on COVID vaccines, but not on the vaccines that finally made it since it is 
um, Manu. So I talk in generalities about the vaccine, but not specifically about the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines because they just came out. All right. D Dane asks, what's the best and most accurate website to provide nutrition info on foods, nutrition facts that are boop, boop. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. That was a, not a planted question, I swear. Um, happy New Year. Happy Holidays. And stay safe.